Yeah, this is pretty. Is it? Yeah. Right. Oh, names. iridescent and stuff. This is the polarization we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And this is just structure. Well, you see, got a hexagon. Way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's likely the, the effect of the magnetization that then polarizes the light. When and, and you were probably at the polarizer on the light. I don't have it on this. No. Oh, okay. I have one with me. In the, you don't it's need a polarizer. It, it, it spins the light one way and the other way. That's why you get the colours. You, you get more oh, hexagonal yeah. structures here. Uh, does the polarising filter... Does it indicate this? Do anything? Doesn't this... So, um, t what can I explain? Like, likely, this, in this case, it's probably got some copper. Uh, maybe. Seems like it would fit. Or at least <laughs> be put between. Shouldn't be there? I don't know. No, no, no. It's fine. Or is it oxidized? Uh, it will be oxidized. It might be picking up copper. That's uh, some globular stuff there. But what, what, what is this uh, material made of? Uh, um, what is it? It's suit. It's it, suit, but it... it it's it, it, suit on, on, on the, the, the stainless steel. That is okay. this, it's this steel. stainless steel. Yeah, but that's the layer below, below, below this black stuff. And this black stuff is deposited through the, through the chamber. It's, it's because so, of the previous processes there has been black it has been all kind of more black than it now is now because it has look, been look at this. has been eaten nice by the, um, by the flesh moist so uh, as we move come around oh, sorry, and then I'll try I'll, it very delicately sorry. well uh, as long as you come into position and then don't move okay sorry uh, uh, that's okay we, we can we can get a closer up on this and then we can So note, uh, like they've all got a black ring around the outside. So if you could, in in three D graphics, you might know this. There's a thing called the Fresnel, which is the glancing angle. So if you can imagine a sphere has come in here, uh, and it has um, material around the outside, as it crashes in. If you can imagine a ball and it's got stuff all the way around here, on the edge you've got the most that, that collides in, so you end up with the black around the outside, whereas this is kind of like you might get some recoiling and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff going on. So you, you end up with that. This is this is quite a nice nice one because we've got three zones. Um but I don't know, we're gonna we're gonna sit there's a lot there, so you could study this for quite a while. And this is being recorded at 8K on here, so we can zoom into it quite a lot. It's only 4K on the computer there. Uh, so looking at the substructure would be quite easy. These are obviously violently impacted. So most of them have lost and, and their... Uh, you can see two colours. And then my yeah. statement is that the, the, the darker ones are old ones being covered again with a layer of... Yeah, yeah quite likely, yeah. So the, the col most colorful ones are the, the, the latest ones. So where, where does the carbon come from? It the can be synthesized. Where, where does it come from? Synthesized. So we're looking at apples, Troy Alpha. What? We're looking at apples. Oh, there's, there's a nice one you actually see <laughs> a little bit more of a tour, but yeah, most of these are the spheres. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Uh, Maybe the very small ones. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, have some symmetry yeah? okay. when, when you get spin one way something happens so on, on Hank, Hank's um, Vega Valley the fluidized electrons have come out and they, they there's like a flood plane and in that flood plane there's hexagonal alternate uh, blotch patches mm -hmm. where the one one series line of he joined hex hexagons are green and the others are uh, red and that shows polarization one way and polarization the other way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this means that somehow the, the the nuclear, because it's all copper oxide, there's there's it, there's no no difference in elements. On a, on a, on a metal. Uh, well, this this is this has got this has got brass. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, it can capture the copper because it's thin. It goes into it, and as it comes down and it deposits it, that might be that, or it's just actually changing the polarization on this. So I've seen this in a, um, a steel plate from a Mars or a vibrator plate. We've got the helical beam, and the helical beam can only be seen when you use polarized light. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this case, it's actually polarizing non polarized light. Okay. Yeah. So I can actually, I've got a different this, light source. This is what uh, Bob found a little bit of crazy when he saw it for the first time. Yeah, a bit crazy. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, we can, look at, we can look at that under here as well. That's the thing of heaven, right? Yeah, that's, that's one this side. Is yeah. this, right, is, so. this is where Bob found many, many, many times. Yeah, it's, that yeah. is yeah. incredible. The micrometeorites. <laughs> yeah. I, I, could, I could see... So uh, the copper dissolves, it becomes... In a, in a gas state, or a uh, it, it becomes detached from It might something? become a condensate uh, uh, in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then as it splats down, it, it deposits and moves it around. But in this case, it, it, the zinc boils off and goes out in, in, the, in between the two plates. There's a plate on top of it. And in, in the channel, you get the copper oxidizing, and then it gets these vortex and anti-vortex. So I'm going to turn the light off here from this and we're going to give it a different angle here because it gives you Whoa. the 3D effect. So you can actually see the splat. Whoa. So you can actually see that there's a deposited material around the outside. They look like the Carolina Bay impacts. <laughs> Do they now? Yeah. You actually, if you get a glancing angle, you can really see how 3D they are. All kind of colors. This, this is why you have to use different imaging techniques to understand what's actually going on. Whoa, you, make a, you see how high this bit is yeah. here? Yeah. It looks like the moon. It does look like the moon. Yeah. All those spires. Except it isn't cheese. Oh, damn, I like cheese. That's so cool. We should really build that UFO. So look, look how different it is. They were hit from that way. So, yeah, some were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially, yeah. So look, you can definitely see that there's the ridge around the outside, yeah. okay, and then you've got a flatter area, and then inside that there's this more dimpled. It looks like the metal has been liquefied in the center there. You see, because mm -hmm. there's more pit. Well, I, I think that's the guts of the evil. Yes, it's yes. Not, it's not the uh, the stainless. It might be the guts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the temperatures are not so high that it can melt copper, eh? so. Mm. It doesn't melt so the it, copper. It, it doesn't melt the copper. A, in a way that it catches it. Totally different from from heating. Yes. There there are many reports in this field. Yeah. Yeah. That's the question. There, there are a lot of observations that that seem to imply liquefaction without implying temperature. And yeah, yeah. like it even insofar as boring a straight hole through alum uh, alumina. Uh, like aluminum oxide uh, with a fluidization only in such a short range that it implies like a temperature of 21,000 degrees yeah. per second yeah. um, a heating rate of 21,000 degrees per second um, as it shot through and melted quote unquote melted yeah, the yeah, alumina yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah so those rates shouldn't be possible no um, Again, so the probably physical law. <laughs> it didn't melt. Not like the standard that. physical law, but no. it is the new law. I mean, the, 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 the law that's already there for a long time, uh, but we uh, are forgotten in this time or forgotten. Well, you I, know, I, I have a little theory about uh, in our well, in our consciousness of this case. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from this uh, if if you create a scalar field, which I defined as a scalar field, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. can slow down the conduction element, the conduction electron, mm -hmm. because it's uh, a lot disrupting the intermetallic bonding. You're yeah, yeah and, okay. and the electrons are the, the, the bonding between the molecules, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. electrons in the, in the metal. Mm -hmm. so if you can slow them down with a force that counteracts its movement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a, look at that a so. I call it a longitudinal yeah. ampere force, mm -hmm. ampere force, which is the opposite of its movement. Mm -hmm. So then it will, the electron will slow down mm -hmm. very much, and then it cannot create the yeah, bonding the center. Mm -hmm. And then the, yeah, the cool. structure will dissolve. Mm -hmm. But that's just a theory. I don't know. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. 
we, we have no, but, theories yeah. ranging as far as like turning an entire brick of aluminum into coherent matter. So right. <laughs> yeah. we... before we give off this, mm. I'm going to have a look at some of the impact marks on the actual uh, sheath here. Ah, yes. Okay. So, and then we'll look at the Vega Valley quick. Have you heard the mm. wire discharge machining? Yeah. Uh, the, the wire discharge? EDM. Wire, yeah, EDM wire discharge machining, zeg maar. Dat is uh, elke staal snijden en uh, versturen. Dat is dus een uh, stil. Het goes in uh, a cup of water, basically. It's the mineralize the ionize the way up. And then they run like a brass wire, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, smaller than a millimeter in diameter. They run it through it, and with that, they cut the steel. With, with it, uh, eject the electrodes from it? Carbon? No, no, they, they, they run an extremely high voltage current through the wire. Yeah. It's a very small wire. If you just, you know, if you touch it, it will snip. Yeah. But yeah. with, with the extremely high voltage current, you can, you can cut big yeah, plates really of steel. Made it it's extremely it's accurate. Meter. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I've seen these pictures. Okay. It's, it's amazing. And, yeah. and that... It should not be happening. Uh, but that's oh. because you're sitting here for the first time and did not watch all the videos of Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it is very much easy to explain yeah. when you know what an Evo does. Yeah. Okay, so here, here is that's an Evo that struck there. the glass, and you can see that the, the, the torrid would have. This is the main part of the torrid here. It's, it's probably in flow this way, and it's. Uh, yeah, so you've probably got one side there. It's not very clear, but you can see the outside of this here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna see what else we got on here. There's, uh, there's, there's more. Uh, this is an interesting oh, yeah. area up here. So. Up there. So, so with 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 the case of uh, uh, electro discharge machining, uh, I I was aware of it, but when I came over to visit for the first time with there's Tony, something cool happening here. He, uh, we'll have a look at that. Yeah. Like it was. It was. Yeah, like we'll have a look at dramatic. that. Um, uh, Tony mentioned it, and I just put it in context of my current understanding at that time, and I immediately arranged to go and see the same company because it was only two minutes walk around from where you lived for nine years in the UK. And I filmed them, and I took loads of samples of before and after material. And uh, I only actually have looked at those samples for, for uh, an, uh, about three minutes, and within 90 seconds, having predicted it, I found that the, the sphere of... of, of, of Copper and then a sphere of carbon with the carbon coming up with the caduceus and everything and then the hemispheres. So it produces the non-radiating boundary. You mustn't have a discharge. They call it wire discharge machining, but there's no discharge. Right. No, so if you have a discharge, it doesn't work. Yeah. But you, you mustn't need, have the arc. But you need, no, no, no. You need water as a, as a kind of... The water is specifically fully deionized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it's produces a dielectric barrier discharge so, yeah. in HHO. It synthesizes HHO yes. and it produces a ball of lightning. And the ball of lightning boundary slices out part of the, the, um, the what, brass. And, and, and it also slices out part of uh, even up to tungsten carbide. Yeah. And that's why it just it, and that's disappears. And that's Material what, properties yeah, just don't matter anymore. No. But how? But but yeah, good question. Nobody, <laughs> nobody knows how. In the industry, we use it, yeah. but they don't have like a physics theory behind it. How it exactly? No, but it's no, it is only and it was invented in the t in the twenties. Yeah, and there is there is only one person who can explain it and mm. sitting in our room. Mm. Who mm. that sees what, what what causes it in the first place? How does dissolve the okay. the atomic bomb? And, uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Ball, ball that's, that's, that's the magic in ball lightning. That's it, the problem. Yeah, does it radiate something in a, like a field? Or well, if, if, if your material the... enters the non radiating boundary of the exotic vacuum object, the ball lightning, inside of that non radiating boundary, it's incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. So at that point, that little part of that huge chunk of metal is experiencing an electric discharge. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's yeah, just yeah. that little part. It's just that little part flaking off and being ionized to bare nuclear. I know, I know, I'm just trying to get it in focus. Very strong yeah. electric field anyway. Inside. In, inside. Yeah, in, in, inside of these, That's like, exotic vacuum objects. Yeah, yeah. 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 It does penetrate the whole. But this is still not in the line of the solid. So well, no, no, but they're moving no, around in the, the whole chamber, aren't they? penetrates its non-radiating boundary. It, yeah, that you can and then see the parts the that penetrate the ball lightnings yeah. are and no they, more. And they go in there as well. Yeah. yeah. So where, where they go, so it, it, it how they fly the around, now we know there's ripping. Uh, I don't know about dissolve. It, it, hmm. The so atom what? had released binding energy when it decided to be with other atoms of its kind. When it became a solid metal, that's that binding energy was there. 
Oh, look, the moment the it enters one. the non radiating boundary of the ball lightning, it gets yeah. access to so much energy that it doesn't matter that it was bonded. It, it's mm -hmm. just being swept up. Okay, so... At least that's what it seems like, you know? It, yeah. You know, if, if yeah. you have a strong enough field, you can rip apart materials. Okay, it's just that let's have a look at your fake it's, 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 it's like, like a catalyzed with, by nanoparticles, by these quasi-particles. Could it basically. have an effect on the bonding electrons? In the bulk, no. Like it, 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 not where it isn't, right? In the bulk, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But at the location of the ball lightning, it would. Mm -hmm. These are photos of where ball lightning went straight to a glass window, basically. Oh, it's just taken off the book. Yeah. Uh, no, great. I mean, I, 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 I've seen these pictures, but I don't have them anymore. So you I don't have pictures. Do you have them? So in the, uh, on the uh, Evo Labs document, so I've just given you a link to yeah. it. Yeah. That book yeah. is in there. So I've uh, the glass had to like actually scan the whole book. Right here. Uh, mm -hmm. Put the whole book up. So it's it, it like, good. Do you have a link to that? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, 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 all the Zoom is just right in the email. I see a group. Yeah, 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 yeah,
the plasma or or etheric vortex state. Yeah. Yeah. But before it hits. You, usually we're just observing like footprints, droppings. Mm. We're we're rarely ever seeing the beast live, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. It's because we usually like to look at material things. <laughs> so here's here's the channels. He, he, he photographed these oh, yeah. heat trails. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but those two are mostly trails. You but, know, the, but, but the droppings and stuff. Could that be? Uh, like an ionization, ionization trail? Mm. For instance. Uh, okay. For oh, so, so ephemeral ones, or the ones where it's carved into glass. Because uh, the, those remain for basically until the glass gets melted. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. do you want to move this around yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out, this is hot. Is it Shishkin that uses the CDs? And you can see the Don't Okay. Is it, is it yeah, yeah. So, when, when. Do you want to move it around? Just have a look. Oh, right, oh, right, yeah. oh, right, oh, right. You move the light around to get the angle. Is it a higher application? Uh, no, it's the same uh, application, but these are one millimeter channels, and because uh, because they're separated in the way they are, we know it's a magnetic fluid. And then it has these kernels on the edge, and they're yin yang kernels, and they are, are um, 50 microns per section. So, time to the, 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 it ends up being 400 microns for two pairs, so it's 100 microns each. So it's not the best example. I'm trying to find a really good example, but. Uh, okay, here. <laughs> These are in twisted pairs, right? And they, they actually yeah. come out like this, and the distance is because this has a magnetic field that has a fall off to here, and this has a magnetic field that falls off to here, and it's self organization of a magnetic fluid. Mm -hmm. And it's basically um, hexa hexagons in the same structure as uh, uh, the 19 1862 or four model of the ether by Mark James Clark Maxwell. Yeah. The yeah. same kind of structure. So they're arranged as hexagons. And they form these self-similar cones in, in, in their pairs. And, uh, yeah, so... Also in the middle of these valleys, the, the like, the iron... The greatest of all... Oh, is that one of them? Iron rich granulated sphere. Yeah, there might be a sphere there. Yeah. The base. There, there will be spheres in the base all over. That's probably a sphere here, there, that one. And, and those, like, crenellations, they're like crystals you can see on those spheres when you look at them under the electron microscopes. They're kind of characteristic to what some meteorologists um, used to call like um, micrometeorites. Mm. The idea was that this is like cosmic dust made mm. of mostly iron and stuff like that. That when it enters the atmosphere, it gets under a lot of pressure. Mm. And um, it, oh, you got that, that's the mirror out. of the island. Yeah, except that's <laughs> there we go. Happened on the inside of a reactor. <laughs> you don't get micrometeorites inside of a reactor. Oh, so, nice uh, to see this side of the sample. 